Paris, the dazzling heart of France, is home to a towering 300-meter iron giant. Graceful yet imposing, the Eiffel Tower. Built as the centerpiece for the World's Fair and intended to stand for only 20 years, it quickly surpassed expectations, becoming a symbol of France and an architectural icon. Today, this engineering feat welcomes nearly 7 million visitors annually and generates over 100 million euros in revenue. However, time has taken its toll. The tower, constructed from 7,300 tons of iron and held together by 2.5 million rivets, now battles severe rust and corrosion. Recent inspections revealed 884 defects, 68 of which pose serious risks to its structural integrity. As we explore the urgent concerns about its future, one wonders, can this historic monument endure, or is it teetering on the edge of a major collapse? In the late 19th century, Paris found itself at a crossroads. As the city prepared to host the 1889 World's Fair, marking the centennial of the French Revolution, it needed something spectacular, something that would capture the spirit of innovation and progress that defined the era. The challenge was clear. Paris required a monument that would stand as a beacon of modern engineering to the world. At a time where the world's tallest structures were religious monuments or ancient wonders, the idea of constructing a tower that would reach 300 meters into the sky seemed both audacious and improbable. Yet this was the situation that Paris embraced. A tower so tall it would dwarf everything before it, symbolizing the power of human ingenuity and the dawn of a new industrial age. The plan was to build an iron colossus on the Champ de Mars, one that would not only be the centerpiece of the World's Fair, but would also redefine the skyline of Paris. The design of this monumental tower was as revolutionary as its concept. Unlike the massive stone structures of the past, this tower would be built using wrought iron, a material both strong and lightweight. Far beyond mere height, this lattice structure exemplified a marvel of engineering that balanced strength with elegance, able to withstand the forces of wind and weather while maintaining a delicate, almost airy appearance. Construction began in January 1887, and the pace was unprecedented, the workforce ranging from 150 to 300 men at any given time worked tirelessly, assembling the tower piece by piece, with steam cranes lifting the iron components into place. By the time the tower was completed in March 1889, it was clear that Paris had achieved something extraordinary. Yet, as it stood tall over Paris, the question remains. How were the challenges posed by weather and other natural conditions overcome during the construction of a monumental structure? On January 28, 1887, work began on the foundations of what would become the tallest man-made structure in the world at the time. But the journey from concept to completion was fraught with challenges, requiring innovative solutions and meticulous precision every step of the way. The first major task was laying the foundations, a process that involved overcoming the unique geographical challenges of the site. For the east and south legs, workers installed four massive concrete slabs, each supporting one of the principal girders. However, the west and north legs, located closer to the River Seine, presented a far greater challenge. Here, engineers employed compressed air cassons, large watertight chambers to drive piles 22 meters deep into the earth. These piles provided the necessary support for the concrete slabs, which were 6 meters thick and designed to anchor the tower's immense weight. The foundations were completed with remarkable efficiency by June 30th, 1887, setting the stage for the next phase of construction. With the foundations in place, the assembly of the iron structure began. The Eiffel Tower was composed of 18,038 individual iron pieces, all meticulously crafted to fit together with millimeter precision. These pieces were prefabricated in workshops on the outskirts of Paris, and then transported to the Champ de Mars, where they were assembled like a giant puzzle. The task was Herculean, requiring not only skill, but also innovation. Each of the iron components was joined using 2.5 million rivets, 
a process that demanded perfect coordination among the workers. Teams of four handled each rivers. One heated it until it was red hot, another placed it into the hole, a third held it in place, and the fourth hammered it into position, ensuring a secure fit as it cooled and contracted. The design of the Eiffel Tower was as much about stability as it was about height. The structure featured four large lattice girder piers that tapered inward, meeting at a single point at the top. These piers were constructed by networks of girders at two levels, creating a framework that evenly distributed the tower's enormous weight. This innovative design allowed the tower to withstand the powerful winds that frequently swept across Paris. The curvature of the piers was mathematically calculated to offer maximum wind resistance. A crucial consideration for a structure of this height. Without this careful engineering, the tower would have swayed dangerously in the wind, compromising its stability. As the tower rose higher, the challenges became even more daunting. The alignment of the four legs was a critical issue, requiring precise adjustments to ensure they met perfectly at the first level. Hydraulic jacks capable of exerting 800 tons of force were placed at the base of each leg to facilitate these adjustments. The legs were intentionally constructed at a slightly steeper angle than necessary, supported by sandboxes on the scaffolding. This allowed for minute corrections that were essential for the structural integrity of the tower. By December 7th, 1887, the major girders of the first level had been joined, marking a significant milestone in the project. The construction process was a marvel of efficiency. The Eiffel Tower, which would eventually weigh 7,300 tons, was completed in just 22 months, a record time considering the scale and complexity of the project. The workers used innovative techniques to assemble the structure. Small steam cranes mounted onto the tower itself, climbed the structure as it rose, hoisting the heavy iron pieces into place. However, the Eiffel Tower's construction was marred by controversy and engineering challenges. As the tower began to rise over Paris, it faced intense opposition from many of the city's most prominent artists and intellectuals. They condemned it as an eyesore, a structure that would mar the beauty of the Parisian skyline. Despite this fierce backlash, Gustav Eiffel and his team pressed on, driven by their vision of creating something truly groundbreaking. The tower's design, while revolutionary, also introduced several engineering hurdles. The use of iron, a relatively new material for such a massive structure, presented significant risks of rust and corrosion. Although Eiffel foresaw these issues and implemented a rigorous maintenance schedule, the full scale of the challenges the tower would face over time was unimaginable. Now, more than 130 years later, the Eiffel Tower confronts a new set of problems. Originally intended to stand for just 20 years, the tower is showing signs of significant wear and tear. Rust has become its greatest adversary, slowly eating away the iron at the framework and threatening the structure's integrity. Recent reports reveal that only 10% of the paint applied during the last major renovation in 2014 remains effective, leaving much of the 6,300 tons of iron exposed to the elements. The deterioration has resulted in the identification of 884 defects, 68 of which pose serious risk to the tower's stability. In response, a $64 million repainting project was initiated to prepare the tower for the 2024 Paris Olympics. However, experts criticize that this is a mere cosmetic fix that fails to address the deeper issues. Another persistent challenge faced is the daily fluctuation in temperature. The metal structure expands under the heat of the sun and contracts during the cooler nights creating a continuous cycle that subtly weakens its structural integrity over time. So meticulous maintenance becomes crucial to preserving the monument's integrity and longevity. The question now is whether these efforts will be enough to preserve this iconic monument, or if the passage of time will ultimately seal the fate of one of the world's most renowned landmarks. If you enjoyed this video, please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications.